I've been working on this uh, neck on the top portion of it. Used a little tooth plane and and some coarse rasps and about every tool I could think of. Try to get that fifty thousandths of an inch bow out of the middle of it. And uh, here's what it came up with. It, it's I hope this will show up real well, but it's pretty well dead flat now with no uh, no truss rod on it. Well, I'm trying to demonstrate this little scratch stop. It's a homemade tool. It's not as fast as a, a router. But this wood in this neck is so curly and so prone to tearing out. And I felt like this would be uh, the best way to do it. Working on this uh, during banjo neck, we've got the frets in it, and uh, I'm sure we overlooked uh, some parts of showing all this. But we've uh, we've got the frets in here, and cleaned the fingerboard up, taped it up with some electrical tape and some masking tape, and blackened the top of the frets with this uh, magic marker so that when we we plane these off and file them off, I've got a little homemade file here that I made a handle for. And we're gonna take the tops of these frets down and true them up. We'll try to demonstrate a little bit of uh, our technique for working these frets down. It's not the fastest. Uh, I don't try to do a fast fret job. I try to do them right. It's, as well as I can but we filed the tops of these frets down and got them all the tops of them smooth and uh, I use this little three-corner file that's been safe edged and rounded and sanded on the edge where the edge doesn't cut into it and tape the fingerboard up and I just uh, file a little bit on one side and file a little bit on the other one we finished uh, rounding the frets over with that little three-cornered file, and uh, here's the tool we're going to use now. This is uh, one that I made, uh, rounded the corners off on and made it kind of safe edge. It's a little tool I bought from Harbor Freight or somewhere and put a handle in it. It's a diamond-shaped thing, and uh, I mean diamond-coated thing, and uh, it's about a 360 grit. Let's see if I can, yeah. And we're gonna refine the top of this with this little tool. The next step in uh, in my process is uh, I go to a 
This is something I learned from Frank Ford. Uh, this is just an eraser, uh, art gum or whatever, but it's, a, it's soft, a little bit soft. And uh, I start with the 400 grit sandpaper and wrap it around this, uh, this little piece of eraser. And I work on these frets. Got the edges smooth down from the side and turn the fingerboard back over. This is a little file that I got from Stuart McDonald. Uh, I've got a homemade one that, that works pretty well, but it's a safe edge. It's flat on one edge and it's rounded on the other. But it's a it's a little specially file. And uh, I use it for rounding the corners. We got this thing feeling pretty good everywhere else. But now we're going to round the corner. One, like Frank taught me here. There's five. Five legs right there. And you can really tell the difference. All polished up, smoothed down, and smoothed down like we want them. And I mentioned this before, uh, the edges of the binding. The, the edge you'll feel of that fingerboard when you wrap your fingers around it. And we're going to just come back with a single edge blade. And we're going to take that sharp edge off of it. Just round it over. You can sure feel it. But to me, this is a, this is an important part of it. Because it sure makes it feel a lot better. Just kind of round the corner of that off. And from there, after I get through with this, I'll run that 1500 grit sandpaper down through there and smooth that up. And that's just about the, the end of the fret part of it. Hope that makes sense.